I can get a nice scroll here. Let us look at the intergalactic problem of chapter 17, number 12. And these are fun problems because this is a derivation. This is the derivation of a, a wonderful thing known simply as the electric dipole. Whishing. Okay. Um, there are some things in this class, and this is our first derivation that we did, that I'm simply not going to tell you about. Um, why? Because, technically speaking, you don't need to know them for AP2, and even the understanding of them for AP Physics C is minimal at best. You're going to see it in college, um, and that's why I want you to look into this. Uh, these are some of our derivations that we will do, and uh, I want you to go hunting around for them. I want you to try them out. I want you to throw out a bunch of paper because you messed it up, okay? I need you to get experience with this. A uh, number of former students have written back an email saying, I hated your stupid derivations, Botzer, but thank God that you did them because they're the only thing we're doing in college, and uh, I'm really good at them now. And when you have students writing back from CMU um, saying that they are owning their introductory physics weed out courses class because they're really good at doing derivations, let's keep doing derivations, even if the students don't like them. Okay, so that's what we're looking at here. Um, if you haven't read your book yet, may I reference Gian Coley? Wow, that's a weird looking G. Chapter 17, section 17-6, page 479 of the Intergalactic. This derivation is just sitting on that page, like literally the whole bottom of that page is the derivation. It's just sitting there for you really neat um, in general though if you would like me to go through it and I guess I will because I care about each and every one of you um, we've got two charges okay we've got the positive charge of Q and a charge of negative Q okay at some far distance away, there is a point out in space, P, that we would like to know what the potential is there at this point. So what is the voltage, okay? Now if, we take a look at this, we can see that for each of these charges, there is some distance to get to this point out in space. Okay, so here's our point out in space. There's some distance R and R for the positive charge and the negative charge to get to that point. And in general, I could simply state that the voltage of any one point is K Q over R. Okay, now the issue with this is is this is like really exaggerated right now. You can clearly see that this R for the positive charge and this R for the negative charge are definitely different. But if this point is like very, very, very far away, then it appears less like that. If here's like the negative, here's the positive, and our point's like way out here. Those look pretty similar, right? But since we're zoomed in this much, we can kind of see the following. We can see that this isn't actually R and R. If we call this short distance R here, then what we actually have is that, I gotta draw this just right. These are distances R. This is some distance L between them, and this is some delta R, some change in R. 
okay? And the addition of R and delta R together make this whole length here. This is super exaggerated because of how I'm drawing this, but this is the idea of the electric dipole. The R's are different and they're based differently off of this value of R here, okay? Now, if we know this angle down here is some theta, then, well, our total voltage here, we'll come back to this in a second, our total voltage is from the positive charge some distance plus the voltage from this piece, okay? And the voltage, once again, is just K. This time we've got a negative charge, so negative Q. And then the total distance here is R plus this change of R. So it's R plus delta R, okay? That's technically the voltage there due to an electric dipole. But we can kind of work this out um, just a little bit better. If we play some, uh, check out the algebra game, I see that K and Q, they are both constants, okay? So I'm gonna pull them out of the equation. Um, so I'm gonna get KQ, and then inside I'm going to get one over R minus one over R plus delta R, okay? And then pulling a little bit of a cross multiplication, going across and across, then I could rewrite this as KQ times, and once again, I just like writing this in my way, times delta R over R, R plus delta R. What ended up happening here is we had R plus delta R minus R, so the R is canceled out, we left with delta R, R times the quantity R plus delta R because our denominators are the same now, okay? So that's what I have here for the potential up to this point. Now, if we wanna see what this delta R actually is, and we have this angle here, theta, this is my opposite side, this is my adjacent side, this is my hypotenuse, right? And from this, what this would mean is that delta R should equal, because this is my adjacent side, my hypotenuse times the cosine of that angle. So it should equal L cosine of theta. And that's simply because, remember, and I'll tag this to the side real quick, purple. Remember, that's just because the cosine of theta in this case is going to equal the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's delta R over L. So I just brought my L over there. I have this equation, okay? Um, not only this, but what we're going to assume is we are going to assume that the actual distance r, it's much, much greater than delta r, okay? So when we do this, when we say that this is very, very far away from this dipole, um, what we can end up doing is if we look in this denominator here, if r is much, much greater than delta r, then like a million, billion, stillion things plus one, it's basically just equal to that, okay? So I don't actually have to worry about this anymore. It's too small, and we're adding it in the denominator, so who cares about it, okay? This means that by replacing delta R here with what I know about delta R, I can rewrite this as a, the voltage is approximate because we did make some approximations there. Um, KQ, I've kept the KQ. The delta R here turned into L cosine of theta. And then this R times R, because the delta R is too small, R times R is just R squared. Okay. This is a dipole whenever r is much, much greater than the length between the two charges, okay? Um, this comes up so often, and there's actually a, a term here that comes so up so often. It is um, this QL right here. This QL comes up so, so often. It is actually referred to, oh, that's a bad Q. 
it's actually referred to as the dipole moment P. And more often than not, you'll see this written as voltage equals approximately KP cosine of theta over R squared. Okay, that's how you'll normally see that written. Um, it has units here of Coulomb meters. Okay. Um, and sometimes whenever, and you can read this in the book, for smaller molecules, uh, they'll use a unit as a Debye, where one Debye is equal to 3.33 times 10 to the minus 30th Coulomb meters. Okay, so this is what we're looking here for the derivation of the dipole moment. Okay, or rather just up here. Um, we're gonna see when we get to optics that this triangle right here and this kind of like, oh look, we've got a cosine of theta term or a sine of theta term. That's gonna come up a whole bunch. Um, it's gonna be how we're gonna do a few of our different proofs in optics as well. So this is something to keep aware of as we're going through this, okay? A little bit of geometry goes a long way. And making a few assumptions here can really clean things up in what we're doing, okay? So that there was the dipole moment. We have our solution there. And thus, fin, we're done with that problem, okay? Any questions?